On a sunny day on the beach, a little girl sings her favorite song while playing in the sand. A woman named Eileen seems to be there with her, but their moments of peace and happiness keep getting intercrossed with violent images of soldiers shooting their weapons and Eileen screaming in pain. Suddenly, Eileen opens her eyes and realizes those images had been a dream. She finds herself sitting on a chair inside a room with no doors or windows, only pointy tiles covering the walls from beginning to end. Confusion immediately kicks in since she doesn't know what this place is or how she got here. To make matters worse, she barely has memories of her old life at all. An AI voice known as the administrator speaks to her through a speaker, giving her the first task, she must move the pencil within the allotted time. That's when Eileen notices a table with a pencil on top of it, and since her questions are ignored, she leaves the chair and painfully drags her body through the floor until she can reach the pencil and throw it away. As soon as the administrator declares the task has been completed, Eileen tries to ask again, but a buzzer rings and she passes out. After dreaming about the beach again, Eileen is woken up by the administrator, who asks her to move the pencil once more. However this time Eileen has been chained to the chair, and her wrists are tied together. This makes her feel helpless and gets her to panic, so to make her cooperate, the administrator explains that if she doesn't complete the task, her daughter will die. That comment triggers a series of memories on the beach and Eileen finally remembers that the little girl is her daughter and her name is Eve. Getting more desperate by the second, Eileen demands to know what's happening with her daughter, but since the administrator ignores her, she has no choice but to complete the task. Untying her hands proves to be impossible even by using her mouth, but thankfully she quickly comes up with an idea, she takes off her shoes and ties them together to throw them at the pencil, managing to push it off the table. Once again, the buzzer rings as soon as she's done and Eileen gets knocked out again. This time, she can see the dream properly, and she finds herself resting on a beach while Eve plays with the sand as she sings. She claims the sand is singing too and invites her mother to join her, so Eileen sings along as she lays down on the ground, falling asleep inside the dream. When she wakes up the next time, she's sleeping on the floor, matching her dream. Obviously her limbs are free now, and a plate with a weird goo waits for her at the table, there's also a killing headache clawing at her head. Since there's no task this time, she uses her free time to inspect the room, but she doesn't find even a slight gap in the walls. The chair is bolted to the floor too, so she can't use it to break anything either. Finally, there's the food at the table, which Eileen is wary of at first. But as soon as she tastes it, she realizes it's delicious and finishes it in seconds. With the plate out of the way, she can now see her own reflection on the tray, getting upset at the fact she isn't looking exactly healthy. The distress is too much to deal with and Eileen moves back to the chair into a fetal position, but as she touches her hair, things get worse, there's a scar on her head that she doesn't know where it comes from. In fact it feels like a surgery scar, which throws her into a full breakdown, they're doing something to her and she wants to get out, but her pleas are ignored as usual. Eileen falls asleep crying and visions of Eve on the beach haunt her dreams again before the administrator wakes her up. Furious, she curses the voice and demands proof of Eve being alive, otherwise she won't play along anymore. The administrator allows Eve to speak, saying she's scared and that she wants her mommy, but it only lasts a few seconds and immediately Eileen is asked to go back to her task. This time there's an unbreakable glass panel between her and the table, causing Eileen to quickly grow anxious. Pushing it doesn't work, and she can't use the chair because it's still bolted to the floor, so Eileen uses her own body instead. Throwing herself against the panel only causes her to get hurt though, and a desperate Eileen begins hitting the panel as she begs for answers and orders the pencil to move. Shockingly, the pencil does exactly that, falling off the table on its own. Before she can register what happened, the buzzer knocks her out again. Another dream on the beach begins and this time, Eileen finds herself with a bleeding gash on her forehead. Eve invites her mother to make sandcastles with her, but as soon as the activity begins, a male voice calls Eileen's name as he touches her shoulder. When Eileen wakes up this time, she's chained to the chair again, the gash is on her real forehead, and there's a man on the floor that knows her name. He tries to come closer, making Eileen freak out and push him away because she thinks he's one of her captors, but the man soon introduces himself. This is her husband Roger, and hearing that name helps her remember him, even if it's just flashes of him on the beach as well. Eileen explains she doesn't remember anything and in return, Roger admits he doesn't know how he ended up here either. Eileen also tells him about the tests and the fact these people have their daughter, causing Roger to freak out too, but their argument is interrupted when the administrator announces the beginning of another task, the pencil must be broken. Just like it happened to Eileen, all of Roger's questions and pleas are ignored, so the couple starts arguing again over how to proceed. Roger isn't tied up and grabs the pencil with no issue, but an alarm begins ringing to scold him for it since Eileen is the only one allowed to complete the task. The pencil is returned to the table, but Roger isn't considerate and instead of helping Eileen think, he keeps yelling at her. This builds up Eileen's fury and when she yells back at him to make him shut up, the pencil floats up and breaks in two. Roger is in shock, and he notices Eileen's ears are bleeding before the buzzer knocks her out. The beach dream includes Roger singing along with Eve this time. When Eileen wakes up, there's food for both of them, 
and her husband is doing the same pointless search for a gap around the room. After pointing out he's wasting his time, Eileen expresses her wish to play along with the tests for the sake of Eve's safety, but Roger doesn't think they can trust these people to keep their promise. He also brings up the subject of Eileen obviously having powers, which she refuses to believe, she's still in denial and thinks it's all a trick. To prove his point, he mentions all the times things broke around the house when they fought, triggering another memory in Eileen's mind, they fought at the beach too. Eileen realizes fighting has always been part of their relationship, causing Roger to calm down a little and be more supportive to avoid more arguments. After having some water, she lies down on the floor to try to sleep, ignoring Roger's pleas to eat something or discuss the subject of Eve. The beach dream finds her laying on the ground too, making Eve wonder why her mother looks so tired and why she keeps going away. Eileen swears she doesn't want to leave before joining Eve's game, but as soon as the girl asks about her daddy, she disappears and leaves Eileen alone, yelling her daughter's name. The yelling continues when she wakes up chained to the chair, but Roger quickly helps her calm down. Eileen's having another killing headache, and when Roger checks, he confirms something is under her skin on the spot with the scar. Before they can discuss the implications though, another task is announced, a ball must be put inside a bucket. Tired of all this experimenting, Eileen yells again to complain, but Roger reminds her of Eve and encourages her to use her powers. Eileen still thinks it's stupid, but even if she did have powers, she can't exactly control them. In order to practice, Roger comes up with an idea, she should use her powers on the screws that keep the table bolted to the floor. Thanks to his guidance and lots of concentration, Eileen manages to gain control of her powers and take out the screws one by one, allowing Roger to push the table closer. Putting the ball in the bucket is incredibly easy now, even if it does make her ears bleed again. Sometime later, Roger apologizes for behaving so controlling and only thinking about himself, blaming it on the stress of the situation. Once Eileen accepts the apology, Roger makes some jokes about the food goo that has appeared on the table again, and it reminds Eileen that he used to joke like that with Eve too. This brings back another memory of the beach, it turns out they took Eve there for her birthday because she loved the beach, yet Roger spent most of the time sleeping instead of playing with his daughter. Trying to avoid another argument, Eileen doesn't mention this last fact, and Roger comes to the conclusion that whatever they put in her head must be blocking it all out. From then on, the couple drops all complaints and follows the tasks to avoid trouble. Each task grows in difficulty, from turning a page to building a whole sandcastle, but Eileen passes them all thanks to lots of practice, concentration, and Roger's support. Her ears bleed every time yet she doesn't get sick, and both of them are kept active through the food goo that appears in the room every now and then. Things become really tense again when the next task involves putting together a gun. Roger guides her by reading the instruction manual the pieces came with, but he's nervous about the meaning behind such an object and can't stop rambling in such an annoying way that makes it hard for Eileen to focus. After she asks for peace, Roger sticks to the instructions, but when he corrects her for the tenth time, Eileen snaps and calls him a control freak. This triggers another argument that makes Eileen remember they argued badly on the beach too and causes Roger to blame her for his alcoholism. He realizes what he said as soon as the words leave his mouth and tries to apologize, but Eileen won't take it, this happened a lot in the past, he would freak out and insult her to then promise to never do it again, yet that promise was never kept. Finally snapping with anger, Eileen finishes putting the gun together and shoots it, only managing to stop the bullet right before it hits her husband because he desperately reminds her they need to save Eve. As usual, the buzzer rings and Eileen passes out to visit the beach dream. Eve is halfway done with her sandcastle yet she thinks they'll never finish without her daddy's help, and when Roger does come closer he ends up destroying her progress. He claims it was an accident, but judging his expression, Eileen can't bring herself to believe him. When she wakes up again, Eileen doesn't speak or move, she stays on her chair while staring into space. It isn't until Roger touches her that she reacts and admits she's cold, thus Roger gives her his jacket and finally convinces her to eat something. To improve her mood a little, Roger tries to plan all the fun things they'll do with Eve once they reunite, prompting Eileen to ask for stories about their relationship since she can't force her memories to come back. Eileen had been studying to be a physics teacher and Roger had been a singer in a rock band, but he quit and got a real job when Eve was born. Hearing these anecdotes makes Eileen laugh after a long time of not doing so, and both of them apologize for all the arguments they've been having. When Eileen grabs the water to have a sip, she heats it up by just thinking she wanted something warm, showing she still has a lot to learn about her powers. Then she rests her head on Roger's lap and before falling asleep, she apologizes for something, but she isn't sure what for. Her family isn't in the beach dream this time, but there's something weird buried in the sand. As Eileen starts digging, she finds Roger's ring finger and Eve's sandal, but before she can understand what's happening, she falls back as the sand begins burying her too. It's at that moment that she wakes up and finds the terrifying next task, she must save Roger, who has been locked inside a booth that is slowly being filled with sand. Using her powers should make this easy, but Eileen can't manage to concentrate between her panic and the fact strange images from the beach keep flashing in her mind, she can't tell what they are, but they feel disturbing. 
Hitting the glass with their fists does nothing, and using the chair that Eileen unscrews with her powers doesn't do anything either, so she can only apologize in tears as she watches her husband meet his end under the sand. Eileen isn't even allowed to grieve or have a breakdown because soon the administrator begins repeating the message of failure over and over, driving Eileen crazy and making her break the speaker. As more memories of the beach flash in her mind and show her screaming there too, a door finally opens in the room and a group of soldiers comes inside to take her away. After everything that happened though, there's no more cooperation from Eileen, she has finally snapped and is ready to find her daughter no matter what it takes. Using her powers, Eileen kills all the soldiers, alternating between quick deaths and slowly making them suffer. When she leaves the room, she finds a sign indicating there have been 298 tests and the last one is still considered to be in progress. The scientists that supposedly had been behind the computers are gone, but more soldiers keep coming, this time shooting at her without hesitation. Their bullets are useless though, Eileen's control of her powers is now perfect and stops every shot before killing every soldier while showing no mercy at all. Afterward, she uses a soldier's eye to activate the elevator, which takes her to the floor with test 297, considered complete. This place is absolutely empty, so Eileen takes the elevator again to reach the floor with test 296, which was also complete. Here, she also finds three weird blue doors and most surprisingly, Roger is there too, crouching on the floor while mumbling they're all like me in a state of shock. When Eileen asks him what he means, Roger points at the door called Spares, where Eileen is also disturbed by the contents. Inside dozens of body bags there are Roger clones ready to use for the next experiment. The Roger outside goes away while Eileen checks the supplies and materials doors, which are filled with all the props they've been using in the tasks. At that moment, more soldiers arrive, and Eileen uses her powers to make them kill each other. She also takes off their masks to reveal they're all clones wearing the same face, a fact the soldiers themselves weren't aware of. Next, Eileen crosses the elevator doors again, but this time she enters an empty room that stays with only one light turning on right above Eileen. This light comes from the administrator, who informs her that the test cycle has concluded. If she's been successful, Eileen thinks she should get her daughter back, but the administrator quickly tells her that's not possible because Eve is gone. Since Eileen refuses to believe it, the administrator disables the memory blocker and Eileen finally learns what happened that day on the beach. Eve played all day with her mother, but Roger stayed back napping, and when they were about to leave, Eileen discovered his bottle had alcohol in it. This triggered an argument that ended with Roger slapping Eileen, which in return triggered her powers. Eileen had been so out of control in her scream that without meaning to she ended up killing both her husband and her daughter in one go. The voice Eileen had heard in the room had been a recreation made by a computer, and now the administrator wants to send Eileen to reconditioning to wipe her mind again. Realizing her memories and dreams are the only thing keeping Eve somehow alive, Eileen refuses to enter reconditioning and offers a deal, she wants to go through testing again. Since the facility's only functions are testing and reconditioning, the administrator accepts and Eileen falls asleep as she sees herself on the beach with Eve, singing along to her favorite song. Moments later, she wakes up in the test room again, not remembering a single thing and back on the first task, to move a pencil. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.